Hey, buddies! Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Age of Wonders 4, where we're going to be doing the Arachnophobia build. Just to make things interesting, today we're going to be playing in the Burning Wastes, or the Burned Wastes, which is the Tier 5 Desolate Realm that has a ton of really bad modifiers. Okay, Lava Lakes means the whole world is basically covered in lava, desolate provinces. There's very little you can do here. You've got volcanic eruptions, which means you can't regenerate health. The fire rains from the sky. Uh, uh, natural, uh, the free cities are hostile, so it's really hard to make alliances. You only have, you, the only real way to deal with them is to kill them. There's also a demon prince who starts out with two extra cities and demon kin and super growth. And he also has like a really powerful throne city. And we're going to be playing on brutal difficulty. I will make a quick modification here to make sure that the AI can't spawn with any of my custom rulers. I want to play against just the default AI factions. And we're going to go ahead and create a faction here. And we're going to be playing spider riding orcs. Specifically with Overwhelm Tactics. So the Spider Mount is an incredibly powerful mount that gives any of your units that are mounted plus 10 hit points and the web ability. And web is currently, well, it's kind of bugged. It's doing too much damage, which is really fun but it is kind of busted. Now, we're also going to start with Overwhelm Tactics so that we get that 20% critical hit chance, which is basically a 20% damage increase. Well, it's more like a 10% damage increase, but being able to deal too much double, like a 50% more damage with an attack is just like really good. Now, when you pick a mount as your physical trait, every single faction that normally doesn't have a mount for their tier 3 unit, like the Awakener here, or for their tier 2 unit in the case of the Barbarian, they will actually get a mount. So normally the Knight for the Feudal, they are actually on a horse, but when you pick Spiders, they'll be on a Spider. Similarly, the High units, none of them are usually mounted, but when you pick a mount, the Awakener, the tier 3 Battle Mage unit, will be on a mount. And similarly, like the, the Bastion for the Industrious, the Dark Knight for the Dark and the, oh my god, what are they called again? The Evoker, the Spellbreaker, I think for the Mystic. Now, normally, only Tier 3 units will get this mount, right? So you look at the Feudal, the Knight is the Tier 3 unit, the Awakener is the Tier 3 unit, the Bastion is the Tier 3 unit, the Dark Knight is the Tier 3 unit, and the Spellbreaker is the Tier 3 unit. Now, the Barbarians are very unique because their Tier 2 unit is the one that gets the Spider mount. And you might be seeing where this is going. This is a ranged unit, the Fury. So we're going to have, essentially, Mongol hordes riding spiders, because we're going to go with a cavalry archer only build here. And let me tell you, it is actually disgusting. Now, we're going to be taking, obviously, Fabled Hunters. Uh, this is for two big reasons. First of all, it means that we actually start with a Fury, a ranged unit, um, because when you're a Barbarian, the only ranged unit that you get is the Tier 2 Fury. So we'll start with an extra Tier 2 unit. We'll also get a bunch of money from Clearing Infestations, Ancient Wonders, Resource Nodes. Now, another option for us to take here would be Silver Tongued. It is good because you start with an extra Scout and Diplomatic Focus and trade deals with Free City are really cheap. However, I think particularly if you're playing on a map with a lot of desolate terrain, Great Builders is fantastic because it means your quarries will yield plus two gold and the extra little bit of material means that you can settle cities more easily by building outposts after 10 turns when you get that first material ability in the affinity tree. Also, quarries giving extra gold is just really nice when you're trying to sustain a build. The Tome of Beasts is a really important first pick for two really big reasons. We've got Animal Kinship here, which gives our units 10% damage and another 10% critical chance when they're standing next to an, a friendly cavalry unit. So we'll be taking the Tome of Beasts and we also have Call of the Wild, which gives all animal and cavalry plus two bolstered defense and plus one strengthened. So this will give us a lot of sustain and combat power in battles. So that's why we're going to start with the Tome of the Beasts. However, we also want to get, there's, there's a couple of more tomes in here that we want to get, but I'm, we'll stick with the Tome of the Beasts. Now, most of our army is going to be mundane units that take gold as upkeep. So we're going to be focusing on champion here to get as much gold as possible. And also leveling up our units is going to be pretty darn important. That'll make a lot more sense later on because one of the final abilities of the Fury is to get plus one range. And that plus one range does in fact apply to the spider attack. We're going to be taking the bow on our ruler. I don't really care what he looks like, but this will be spider. Um, these will be the orcish spider wranglers. And this guy will be silky uh, eight legs. And that is going to be the leader of our faction. Now, let me tell you, this build is genuinely bonkers. Like it's actually insane, but that's what makes it so much fun. It's just such a cool and interesting build. Okay, so Silky Eight Legs is here, and that is our build. Let's take a look at our starting position. We're starting on the edge of a lava lake. We do have a pasture, we have a quarry, and we have a mine. We also have actually a really nice forestry area here. This is fantastic. This is a great, um, this is a great spawn. Now, 
Now, let me give you an idea of the base strategy that we're going to be going for here. In the very early game, we're going to be focusing on building things like stonemasons. Um, we're going to be spending almost all of our Imperium to attract population and then building farms so that we can boost the stonemason all the way up to the thing. Now, I believe we start with a couple of extra buildings because we picked the great builders. Yeah, we start with the workshop building, I believe and stone walls, or I, th I think, I don't remember. But anyway, we, we start with some benefits, which is quite nice. So let's go ahead and start building that stone mason. We're going to be pumping Imperium to grow the city as fast as possible. Uh, I'm going to immediately delete any non-spider unit that I have because I just want that money to come in. And we're going to immediately start recruiting Pathfinders. Now, we are on brutal difficulty, so we have almost no money to, to start with. And we're mostly going to be looking for easy things that we can clear. So we're going to look for very, very vulnerable and easy to clear. Um, yeah, like a layer of silk. This is the perfect kind of ancient wonder that we can clear early into the game. And we're also looking for resource nodes and things of that nature. Oh, wow, we've already found the Demon King. Um, that's a tier, a turn one finding of one of his cities. That's really bad. Okay, so you, you do tend to spawn next to him, so it's gonna be tough. Uh, we will immediately take Animal Kinship for the 10% damage and 10% critical chance for units that are adjacent to a cavalry unit. Remember, that's gonna give us a 30% base critical chance of war morale or anything like that, um, which is insane, especially when you have web. And I find it's a really good idea to just follow the path when you're doing your early scouting until you reach a point where you can't do anything. Uh, and then and then you, then you leave the beaten trail. So there's an underground passage here. We might have to do some underground stuff. Okay, yeah, I don't wanna stand here. Okay, that's going to be a tough one to break. That's all right. I'll get out of there. But the good news is my capital is the thing that's in the firing line from Cragwell. And so we should have a relatively easy time defending that. Now, it's quite unfortunate because I am a hunter build and I haven't found a single thing that I can clear with my units. Let's go ahead and grab this cartographer. There is a Lobs Hollow up here and his capital is to the north. Okay, I'm actually super boxed in here. This is really bad for me. This is genuinely uh, a really awful situation to be in. Okay, my capital grew. Let's go ahead and put a farm in here. Then I'm immediately gonna spend this to put another farm. And then I'm gonna spend this to put another farm. And then I'm gonna come in. Uh, this will claim the pasture, the quarry and the gold mine. I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna immediately uh, wanna get started on the Masonic Hall. But for now, I'm just gonna get to work on the vendor because what I need to do is now to, to start making some quarries. So I'll start to attract population and plant down quarries. Boom. Um, but we will quickly get the vendor. Uh, and we're going to also rush the communal tent town hall so that we can start to build tier two units, mainly the Fury. But until then, we will build two more Pathfinders. And then we want to build as many Furies as possible. Uh, it is really, really unfortunate that we have found nothing that we can clear. Okay, we can clear this pretty easily. Now, the unfortunate thing is these are Storm Guys, so they do have Wind Barriers, so they're a lot harder to hit with ranged attacks. We actually might not be able to clear this. Um, yeah, we're getting super unlucky. I did a test game where I spawned. Where there was like a lava lake between me and the Demon King. And so I had plenty of time to deal with him. And I also had like a ton of resources around me so I could clear tons of stuff. Um, this Forbidden Shrine will be hard to clear. Yeah, we're... we're this is actually like a super hard starting position that we're in right now compared to a normal game. I might have to build some cities underground. That might be how I have to survive here to uh, try to avoid the attention of the Demon King and just keep it one city above ground. So I'm going to take my hero. I'm going to send him underground and I'm going to start bringing my units around to go fight underground. I have four units currently. I have two more in the queue. I think with five spiders, I should be able to clear the underground. So I'll spend a bit of money to get them out. I do now have animal kinship, which is nice. Uh, we definitely want Call of the Wild. This fits with our build. I'll cast animal kinship the second that I have the mana. The Demon King has already declared a rivalry on me, so he will be declaring war on me very soon. So I have a very small window of time to actually get underground and build this city. This might actually be the worst spawn location I've had in attempting this challenge. Let's go ahead and purchase rush this guy to get him into the stack. So that's five units, plus I have another scout on the way. And next turn I can start making Furies. Okay, let's continue to attract population and build these important buildings. Mainly we want to get the Masonic Hall up here as soon as possible so that we can develop our capital really efficiently. And we also want to get just generally a lot of production. So we're going to be spending a ton, and I mean a ton of resources to build up the city. Right, let's go ahead and go underground. We have over here, this should be a pretty easy stack to clear. Um, I'm pretty sure, what is this? This is a bronze infestation spawner, so it shouldn't be too bad. We did meet Hartheim. I will give them a Whispering Stone. We're probably going to declare war on them soon when we have two stacks of units. Let's go ahead and blast this. Easy kill. One of my scouts did take a little bit of damage, but that shouldn't be a big deal. 
and we'll clear this brigand camp once we have the rest of our units. Let's immediately come over to the capital city and start to print the furies that we're going to use to clear the entire landscape of enemy units. Now, I need to save up 100 Imperium uh, for turn 10, but until then I can continue to spend. And the reason I did 100 Imperium for turn 10, because that's when I'm going to settle my um, thingies. I would like to wait a turn before I fight this. I want this scout to get down and in. Are you regenerating health right now? You are regenerating, so you will regen five health. Um, do I clear this this turn? Let me have a think about that. I think I wait a turn so that I have Call of the Wild, because that's a really good spell. You know, I think this game needs some uh, higher tier resources to spawn on the ground. Now, if I auto resolve this, I will lose. However, if I manually fight it, I think I have a really good chance. It really just depends on what this hero's skills are, but we shouldn't have too much trouble. Now, we are up against a Spellbreaker tier three unit, so that we do have to be careful about the fact that they will have an AoE Star Purge, which will remove all of our positive status effects. So we never want to be able to let them hit more than two units with this ability. Um, and we also never want to let them hit this Pathfinder because that'll just be an insta-give on this Pathfinder. I might say that pathfinder back honestly now you have a range of four so i don't want to get into a point where these spearmen can get you uh, but also because i need to have at least one unit adjacent to you at all times so i will put my fury next to you this is really unfortunate terrain actually for this game that i want to be doing um, but this this should be find this setup that we're going for where we keep people in groups of two because that allow us to respond and dodge and avoid oh yeah this is perfect right so they just kind of fell into my trap right now uh, let's go ahead and cast call of the wild that'll be plus two bolster defense which is a 10 percent damage reduction um let's throw the web out look at that damage on the web it's really damn good now they will have heals we'll get up here to get a shot off and then you, well, I want to be careful about the counterattack from the Spellbreakers. So you're going to just sit here because if I were to step forward, I would be too close. Do I want to throw a web attack that hits only two? I think I might be able to get a kill here if I throw two webs. Yep, perfect. Kill two other units with just web attacks. That is the power of the web, by the way. Um, it's turn two of the battle and two enemy units are dead. All right, so they, now they use the Star Purge, so they no longer have the Star Purge ability. Okay, I lost a scout. It's understandable. Let's throw the web. Boom. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure we cast Call of the Wild. So we have another web on this scout. We will throw it out on you to hit this guy. Big damage. Uh, 42 damage. Perfect. One, two, three. And then you're going to step forward one tile and try to take out this support unit because he hasn't used his heal yet. And I want to make sure he doesn't use his heal. Damn. Okay. I'm not going to quite get the damage. If I had a cast bolstered strength before I threw that attack, he might not have got his heal off. That's okay. Losing two scouts to clear this camp is totally fine. Remember, the scouts are expendable. The real unit that I want to have is the Fury. Uh, but I will try to preserve my scouts where possible. So you do 42 damage and you do 39 damage. So I will kill you with you. And then I will do the big hit with my hero. 37. Boom, boom, boom. Nice crits. And then we'll focus down that hero because the hero is the real threat at this point. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to retreat with my Fury. I don't want my Fury to die. 36 damage on you is a big win. Don't want to be in range of this guy. Let's try and get a flank. And then that's a good flank. So my hero should be able to finish off this battle. Yeah, it looks like his hero is routing. We should be able to finish this. Perfect. So I lost two scout units, which is fine because we did manage to clear this and we'll get a big bunch of rewards. 125, 126 production, 150, the Horn of Plenty. Okay, this is all great stuff. Horn of Plenty, heavy crossbow. I don't know if I want to switch to, but in terms of promotions, I definitely will take the um, sprint. This will allow me to step and to also use this will, when I sprint, I'll be able to step forward a tile and use a web, which will open up a lot of opportunities for webbing people. Um, so these guys are a little bit hurt. I'm going to take them back above ground and get inside my territory. I need to get pretty far back to actually heal because you don't heal inside desolate terrain on this map, as far as I'm aware. Uh, yeah, cannot regenerate. So we'll come back. We'll hang out here until we have two more Furies to refill this army. Call of the Wild has been researched, as we had expected. Summoning a wild animal. This can be useful, as can the Wild Speaker. I will take the Summon Wild Animal. The occasional animal in this build can be useful. Um, I am going to immediately sell these remains because she does have a eagle bow with 20% extra accuracy as well as the chest plate of vitality. So let's go ahead and sell that and then come to my leader. He will take the eagle bow. This will increase his damage by one per shot and we're not going to change the mount, but we will give him the chest plate of vitality. That's an extra two defense plus an extra 10 health, which is a massive effective HP increase. I'm going to take my units, put them inside my territory. I'm going to take my hero. I'm going to send him underground. I'm going to immediately... Ah, it's next turn that I do that. But I would like to take Fruitful Integration so that Founding and Absorbing Cities uh, takes less time and also Military Engineering so that when I build outposts, it happens faster. But yeah, I'll bring my hero underground to get that started. Uh, we need to kill 
Hartheim. You should probably meet them first. I'll give them a Whispering Stone for now, but we will be killing them. All right, you guys are inside my territory, so you are healing. I'm going to go ahead and speed up that Fury recruitment. I'm going to grab myself the Wizard Tower for the plus five Imperium per turn. And then... I'm going to grab the market so that I can keep sustaining my military. But I do need to get like things like the battle ritual site and the um, and the blacksmith. So maybe I'll get the blacksmith first because that 20 extra draft actually is a huge increase in the rate that I recruit units. Uh, a group of farmers in Hartheim are asking me for something. They want mana. I don't have enough mana to spare. So I will just try the nature affinity check to get free allegiance. If it doesn't, if it fails, I'll just declare war on them. That's fine. Okay, so we're just going to kill these guys later and then va forcibly vassalize them. Uh, let's go ahead and come here. I'm going to go ahead and take the military engineering boost, which will make my outposts cost half gold, take one less turn to build, and start with the palisade wall, which is a huge cost decrease. I think palisade walls cost like 160 gold, plus the outpost itself costs 25, so this saves you like like nearly 200 gold every time you build an outpost. And if we take the um, fruitful integration, not only can we build cities faster, they start with an extra population, which just gives them a kickstart. It's really, really great. I'm going to rush by this Fury, because the, the main thing I need to do is I need to start getting into fights uh, so that I can start to level up my hero. The higher level my hero is, the better chance I have of actually surviving the game. I'm going to continue to produce two more Furies, and once I produce those, I'll take these scouts out of the army and send them on an actual auto-explore mission. Perfect. We built the outpost down here. I am going to go ahead and build a work camp so this city will start with two population, and then I'll immediately found this city. Our main objective will be to build up this underground city so that it can form a part of our economy and sustain the rest of our military. Because my capital city up here, this is going to have to be a fortress where we just hold off uh, Caravar the Willbreaker. Yep, we definitely need to clear the um, Scorched Forge. This is going to give us a huge uh, gold reduction in our unit costs here, plus a bunch of money and a bunch of draft. So definitely want to try to get onto the Scorched Forge. Um, unfortunately, not many battles to be found down here. I am going to have to try to level up my hero in war. Hartheim is going to have to be our public enemy number one. The good news is there is plenty of tiles here that we can break open. I'm going to take excavation as my skill so that I can start to break open these things uh, because there are sometimes unit loot boxes inside, aka things that we can kill. Space out my armies so that we can get maximum diggage. Why don't you dig this tile? I'll bring my army over and then they can dig this tile. This way I'm digging three tiles per turn and so I have a good chance of actually finding something to kill underneath them. There's the summoning of a wild animal. Um, Vision of Victory is a pretty reasonable barbarian spell. It gives you three fortune, which is a 30% critical hit chance. It's good to cast on turn two. Now, we need to develop our city. I would like to get the Forest of Stakes and the Wildlife Sanctuary, but sustaining my... Uh, sustaining my economy with the market is going to be very important. Like, th to, to put this in perspective, the market will allow me to sustain one extra spider. Like, that's how expensive these Furies are. They cost 12 gold per turn to maintain. Um, very, very expensive units. Very powerful units. Let's go ahead and cast Animal Kinship. We want that 10% damage and 10% crit chance. That's going to help start us scaling hard and having much better auto-resolve potential and also just much better battle potential. Uh, it looks like he's getting ready to declare war. He's invading my territory with Furies. He also has spiders. Oh no, one of his cities is my city. He has an Orcish Spider Wrangler city, which means he gets the spider. Because normally he's the Abadothan Orcs, right? Whereas one of his cities is one of mine. So I should really take that out if I could. And you're damn right I will. Perfect. Okay, we found an army down here. It's a whole bunch of vampire spiders. There's not a huge amount of room for things down here in this in this city, but that's fine. Let's get grouped up. Ideally, we would have already cast Animal Kinship, but that's fine. Isn't a very strong army. The really scary thing here is the Spider Matriarch and the Bone Golem. As long as we get one Immobilize off from our web abilities, we should be fine. He is absolutely not respecting my borders right now, um, which is what we'd expect from him. So I can deal with the best Blessed Souls. This is a great opportunity for us to actually get a quest done. Uh, blessed Souls aren't that difficult to deal with. They have a ranged smite, which, you know, kind of sucks, but shouldn't be too bad. All right, let's see if we can deal with this guy. Auto combat, please. Yeah, okay, perfect. Auto resolved worked out in my favor. Don't have to fight that battle manually. Um, you did finish your work camp down here. Now, your main objective is to generate us gold. So I'm going to go ahead and build that gold mine. And then we'll settle the city next turn. I produced a market in the capital. So the gold income in here is starting to get really high. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take this forester on the border and immediately plant down a forest of stakes. The reason for this is that it will give demoralized to enemy units in the adjacent provinces and give me a little bit of food and production, which is really efficient. Also, I am a great builder, so I think I find these things fairly cheap and quick to build. Um, but we do also want to get the wildlife sanctuary, so we'll plank that down there. Uh, because that counts as a forester, we will also be able to get the storehouse to allow us to continue to grow this city. So I'll get this, I'll get storehouse first and then the forest of stakes, and that should be pretty efficient growth for us. Let's keep on recruiting furies. I never want to dip below 100 gold per turn. 
I want to try to stay above 100 gold per turn. Um, let's go ahead and take Archery 2 on my hero. So he'll do 10% more damage. Now remember, Archery, right, as an ability, it says physical ranged attacks gain 10% damage. The web is a physical ranged attack. So just keep that in mind. All right, I'm going to take this scout out of the army, put it on auto explore so that we can find more about the world. See if they can't clear this. I don't think that food stash is occupied. Uh, let's go ahead and deal with these, these souls. Blessed souls, I've got five furies now. This should be a really easy clear, um, to be honest with you. Oh wow, well, we lost a fury, probably from the Archon Smite. So we just want to try to get into a position where they can't smite the same unit, or they smite my hero. So I tell you what I'll do. I'm going to do something a little bit sneaky. I'm going to rush forward with my hero, shoot them once. Now the Archon Smite is a four range ability. So that's one, two, three, four. So as long as all my heroes or all my units are behind my hero, we should be totally Fine. We're basically using our hero as a tank here. All right, perfect. So he rushed forward and condemned us. Uh, let's go ahead and now I could mark this guy as prey. That would reduce his defense quite a bit. He currently has seven armor, which is a lot, mostly from shield defense. So I think we would do 18 damage if I mark him as prey. This guy would now do 42 damage. That's just a massive damage increase. So this is why this build works so well, because not only do you have the web, but you also have range units that can really take advantage of the mark as prey ability. Uh, let's fire off a web to see if we can immobilize him. He resisted the immobilize. And so we'll just wait a turn and let them approach us again. Then we'll do the mark as prey and we basically just rinse and repeat. Uh, so this build has like the perfect setup for dealing with a wide variety of scenarios. We can focus down single targets. We can massively buff the entire army with defense. Uh, after clearing this, I think taking Imperium is my play here. So I'll take the Imperium. I'm going to go underground, come to this outpost, immediately found a city. You can't move. And now we're going to go ahead and declare war on Hartheim. And the goal is to pillage their tiles and try to bait their armies into fights to level up. So let's go ahead and declare the war with Hartheim and we'll begin the battle. That does give us back a Whispering Stone. I'm going to put that Whispering Stone in my capital city. Uh, this will slowly build up to be a plus 30 positive stability in here, and higher stability will lead to the city generating extra resources at the stable or higher. It's only a 5% boost, but honestly, every small little bit helps. This guy is definitely looking to declare war on us. He is the number one power in the entire game, and I'm currently the number, number seven power in almost every single category, except for economy. I have pretty good gold income, um, but yeah. This is playing a brutal difficulty against the Demon King. It is a genuine challenge. Okay, the Forest of Stakes is complete. We are going to come in here. And since we're going for more of a stability opener, I'm going to go ahead and grab myself a... Well, I really need that 10 mana. So I'll grab the Shrine and then I'll grab the Tavern. Um, but I also really want the Draft. So I think I'll go like maybe Shrine for mana, then the Battle Ritual Site for the Knowledge and Draft, and then the Tavern for the Stability to try to get that stability up nice and high. I'm also going to take soil tenders here to get plus five food on my farms. That is 15 food in Relic right now, um, which is a pretty decent amount of food. Um, 15 food, right? To put that in perspective, like the granary gives you 20. So pretty damn good. It's going to keep us growing quickly. And the faster the city grows, the more powerful it gets, especially because our quarries give us money. The more quarries we can get down better. Nice, we picked up 75 food. That's fantastic. That will allow this city to grow. Uh, this city's job is to do some mid to... Oh, that... This mana node is actually occupied, so there is actually a fight here that we can take. Um, it's probably going to be stone elementals and stuff. Yeah, perfect. Auto-resolve. Yeah, barely took any damage on the auto-resolve. By the way, these spiders are insane in auto-resolve. Like, genuinely insane. Let's get started on the work... Yeah. yeah, production. We want the city to produce, 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 so that it can build um, the granaries and stuff. This Scorched Forge, do I think I can clear it with this army stack right now? I think I would want another Fury before I did that, so uh, when this Fury finishes, that's when I'll consider it. Now, for our next Tome, we will be going for the Tome of Enchantment. That is for the Seeker Arrows here, that'll give plus one range to our web attacks, right? That's huge amount of range. Plus, we will also get Awakened Tools, giving us production and draft, allowing us to recruit units faster to remax. The Rune Carver's ca uh, Camp is a great source of draft and mana as well, in a quarry-heavy map. And then otherwise, these other abilities, we're not too worried about it. Uh, so let's go ahead and take Seeker Arrows. This is the most important one. Also, um, this actually unlocks an ability for my heroes, the Sundering Strikes, which gives them a 60% chance to inflict Sundering Defense, which can really help when we're focus firing. So I'm going to take that. Even though 60% isn't that huge, it's, it's pretty decent, especially because it's applying from range. We also just finished Animal Kinship, so now my spiders are starting to become already super powered. Okay, I can get myself another hero. Feed on Chaos or a Plague Bearer. I really don't like either of these. I mean, I'll take the Feed on Chaos hero, but I'm immediately going to recruit her and switch her to being a bow user. Vigor is a fine ability. I'll allow her to keep that. I'm not going to reset her skills. And then my goal is to send her off to try to settle a city somewhere. 
potentially over these mountains would be a good area if I could get a city down here somewhere. And I'll put her as the governor of Tuskheim. Um, this city will, unfortunately, because it's cramped into like a little spot down here, it will have like limited potential, but it'll still do good work. Never let the limited potential of a city prevent you from building it because sometimes a city doesn't need to have a lot of potential. It just needs to have enough potential to make a difference in your build. All right, let's go for the Scorched Forge. Let's explore it and see what we can do. It's a risky battle. We're up against a bunch of these guys. They have explosive phase. I'm hoping the auto combat goes well. Okay, I'm gonna have to fight this manually. Now, I've never actually fought a battle in here before, so this could go really poorly for me, especially depending on what this is. Whenever a defending magma spirit is killed, it spawns a lesser magma spirit. Okay, that's actually really bad for me, especially because these guys do a lot of magic damage and I don't have a huge amount of resistance. My army is more built against physical damage, so this could go really poorly for me. However, my hope is... Um, that by using my hero as bait again, we should be able to make something work here. We are going to have to keep our units spread in groups of two again. And we never want to give them more than two hits with an ability. So let's see how they respond to this. Right, the dogs rush forward. Okay, this might actually be a perfect web time for me. Uh, let's go ahead and do a call of the wild. We will throw web at these dogs. Boom. Big damage on the dogs. If we can get these dogs cleared off the map, it'll be perfect. Okay, they're immobilized, which means they're effectively out of the fight for a few turns. Let's do a sprint. Forward one tile, then I'm going to bring you forward one tile, drop this, hope for the crit. Okay, we got the crit and the triple immobilize. I don't want to bring you any more forward, because I don't want these guys to be able to get multiple conjoined attacks on a single target. Uh, it's already kind of scary with two of them attacking my leader. But what we can do is come up to here and maybe focus fire down one of these guys. We don't need to kill the dogs this turn, so we'll just focus on shooting these. And the fact that they're immobilized, all three of them, will mean we'll get really good. Let me see, what would be the damage like on this guy? If all three of them attacked him, they might kill him, um, which would be really bad. So I'm just not going to let that happen. The immobilize is doing a lot of work for us here. We need to keep some webs. Okay, big blast, big blast. Yep. So they had to space their damage out a bit, which is great for me. They weren't able to concentrate their damage onto a single target. Now, let's start firing off webs. Boom, big web. Uh, we can get a kill on this guy. Uh, let's go ahead and cast Call of the Wild again. We can immediately kill this fire spirit or this bigger spirit. Let's throw the web. Uh, what's the damage like on these guys? They're pretty weak in comparison, so let's kill this. The sooner we get rid of the big guys, the better. These guys need to deal with the dogs, 100%. And also we can stack up slightly closer now. So let's deal with the dogs. Dogs are dealt with. Morale is high. Their morale is low. We're taking a little bit of counterattack fire. Let's make sure we're killing off things. Step forward this far and step forward this far. This will give us overwhelm tactics on these guys. One, two, three. And one, two, basically dead. What do we go for here? I think we mark his prey on this guy. And then if we come forward a single tile, we should be able to basically kill him. Fuck, okay, that didn't quite work. Maybe I can flank with you. Get the kill, please. Oh, okay, that worked out near perfectly. Okay, so he is routing, so I just need to kill this smaller spirit and then I win. So one, two, three, perfect. Okay, that was... um. That was a very close and tight battle, and there was a lot of like very small decisions that I needed to do to actually win that without a loss. Uh, but now we cleared this, we get 475 draft, which is amazing. Uh, I could get the Paladin's Winged Helmet, which would give me Fearless, Cannot Lose Morale, and a bit of defense. I can get a new weapon, the Corruption Orb, which is a tier 3 bolt, uh, or I could get 380 gold. I like the idea of the 380 gold, that's perfect. I'm going to come in here, my hero leveled up, we're going to take a signature ability, summon animal. Ugh. It's pretty good actually with this build because the animal will act as a front line for my for my units and while I don't love it uh, we can also take eagle eye eagle eye will increase the range of web from four boom to five so that's really good um, we're already starting to hit our late game stride in the mid game <laughs> uh, all right there's a watchtower here I want to go touch that watchtower so that I can learn more about the southern area of the map I'm going to put this scout on well auto explore I think that's reasonable I can produce probably two more furies comfortably so that's what I'll do that's about what my army can sustain right now. I'm going to annex the Scorched Forge. This is going to be 15 draft, 10 gold, and 5 Imperium. That Imperium is going to be really handy. The city has two mines. Obviously, this isn't an ideal setup for this city, but getting the workshop up and the storehouse as my first buildings will be helpful. Um, but that extra money income is just really going to allow me to continue to produce these Furies. In fact, I think I can afford three more Furies now. Let's tap this. Okay, there is actually potential for a city down here. There's a mine, there's Fireforge Stone... There's battlefield remnants. Um, now, underground here, you still have a scout in you. So I'm going to send that scout above ground. I'll break that scout off, put it on auto-explore. Then I'm going to take this army 
bring it to here. I believe I have a fury on the other side. I'll bring the fury down. Um, enter, join, and then we're going to go and pillage this hut, mainly for the gold, but also to try to antagonize the defenders of Hartheim to come fight us, and then we can fight them in battle. I'm going to take the Consolidated Industry ability. This will give me plus one city stability for each adjacent province improvement of the same type. This is quite good because I do plan to build my province improvements in little blocks. You can see here, these quarries are now minus four rather than minus five. This is a minus three. So it's a nice little passive boost to the city stability, which will overall increase our economy in the long run. I'm expecting the war declaration in the next 10 turns from him. So I can block growth here, gain a nature boon, or I can gain an autumn fairy. I don't think I want that. Um, I'm going to take the nature crisis because I can't afford a nature fairy right now. Let's pop out a fury to kind of scout the city to see what we're dealing with. It looks like they don't have too many units. Um, if I check the combat width, I can't really reach that other quarry. So I'm just going to keep my army stacked together while we pillage. I wouldn't call this cost effective, um, what we're doing with our army, but I think it's a reasonable thing to do. I think settling a city right here on this forest province is reasonable. We'll get the layer of silk. We'll build a whole bunch of quarries over here. Uh, there's also what looks to be a dragon's lair that we can potentially clear out later on. Um, so I think this is a reasonable spot to go. And this is probably where I'll bring my hero after we clear Hartheim to get our third city. I'm also going to bring this guy back downstairs now to continue the fight and hopefully vassalize militarily that free city. The reason we need to vassalize free cities militarily on this map is because the the hostile houses modifier or, or might makes right modifier is active, right? Where free cities don't respect whispering stones. Right, we got the outpost here. I'm going to immediately build stone walls because we want to have stone walls in this outpost because it's actually vulnerable to attack potentially from above ground. We cleared this. Um, let's keep on pillaging until I feel like I have enough units to actually fight them. We just finished Seeker Arrows, giving all of our physical ranged attacks plus one range. We're going to cast that now. Awakened Tools is great for city development. It's going to give us draft as well. So this is going to give us plus one range. It's going to cost us two mana per unit, which is a very affordable cost. We did just finish a tavern in the capital, which means the stability is really high. Um, the city is about to grow. I'll tap that 18 Imperium so that I can get this extra lumber mill. And then with that extra lumber mill, I'm going to immediately plant down the wildlife sanctuary, but not before I place the um, rune carver. And I'm going to put the rune carver right here on this quarry because it can have up to one two three four adjacent quarries the rune carver gives you 15 draft plus three mana per adjacent quarry and it counts as a quarry so that's going to be one two three four that's going to be 12 extra mana here which is a pretty decent amount um so there's the rune carver's camp fantastic let's also go ahead and begin the wildlife sanctuary on top of this forester it's going to go from giving us two food three production and four appeal or four unhappiness to 10 food, 10 draft and minus four unhappiness. These aren't like perfectly ideal locations, but if you sit and wait for the perfectly ideal location, you're going to be building a suboptimal empire. I'm also going to grab a granary because I want to keep the city growing and I would really like to get the armory too so that I can continue to produce furies. Although I think I might be overbuilding furies, so I'm going to cancel one and just stick to this one more fury. Um, I need more gold income. Uh, I'm going to be getting some gold income in here the specialist districts that's about 31 turns away impressment could save me a little bit of cash i do have a couple of tier one scout units more likely battlefield looting will, will give me a little bit of cash flow yeah it's mostly just going to be about if i can get this city state hartheim vassalized and i can continue to pillage uh, that'll be good okay perfect they actually came out to play okay so they brought two stacks now they are barbarian culture which is a little bit scary because barbarian cultures do have um the berserker so i'm just gonna fall back a smidge yeah, I'm just going to fall. I want to abort this and fall back to the edge of their territory because I just want to wait until I have a little bit more power. But I definitely want to fight them outside of their city if I can. We're going to go ahead and enchant with the Seeker Arrows. It's going to cost me 14 mana per turn, which is not cheap, but it's also not too expensive. All right, let's have a look at this. Um, tier 2, Tier 2, Tier 1s. I think I can take this with my abundance of webs. Um, now, it'll be poor in auto resolve but only losing a scout that is totally acceptable losses let's go ahead and take on the city next turn so that was a great battle there for me now i've lost almost all my scouts so i'm going to take a moment here in my capital and just build also uh, with the wildlife sanctuary we can actually build hunter spiders and these hunter spiders are also insane um as our front line they have 70 health three defense and two resistance they have the web ability and they also evolve into tier four hunter spider matriarch so i'll probably want like one or two of these in every army um because the hunter spider matriarch is ridiculously good it's basically like just a giga assassin um so we will also be adding these to the armies plus they're also low maintenance so they're quite a bit cheaper than regular furies um yeah let's grab ourselves like two pathfinders uh, I may as well take Impressment, so any of my tier 1 units are 2 gold cheaper to maintain. Sh Sharna the Shining is leveled up, which is my other hero. We are going to take on her Sundering Strikes. 
That'll make her be able to reduce the armor of enemy units, which will, when we're focus firing, is really important. Right, let's go ahead and put that city under siege. We're going to start the siege. We're going to add siege projects. Uh, we do have ballista towers, so we're going to need to do a tower bombardment. And then we're also going to um, construct onagers. Honestly, yeah, construct onagers, I think, is the right thing so that we can break the walls. Uh, this will take four turns to break them, which is, you know, a reasonable amount of time. Right, so we got stone walls down here in this outpost. I think I will build the work camp to get that going. Um, we got a pathfinder, put him on auto explore. We also built the granary here in the city. I would like to get the mana obelisk. I could also get, yeah, I think my mana is a little bit thin. So the mana obelisk is the right move here. Tuskheim can finally annex a quarry. So we'll do that. Slowly bring up the cash flow in the city. Fire Queen Carissa the Red. I will send her a welcome gift and see if she will do a wizard bond. She will. Uh, so I basically, because the only person I have to fight is the Demon Prince, I'm going to try to be friends with literally everyone else until I feel strong enough to take him on. None of this research matters, so I will just take... Uh, I guess Sundering Blade could be really good for my fighting spiders, so I'll take that. I think sp spiders should counter skirmishers, in my opinion, because that's how they play. I don't think they should they should be fi fighters. Uh, so let's see. I could take money and... Da -da -da -da. Wow, Caravar did a huge dick move and just grabbed a province inside my territory. So we're going to have to do some to do some work on that. Um, there is an NPC army coming for me that I'm going to have to deal with. Um, probably take me a few turns to deal with that because I'm sieging down Hartheim. Let's go ahead and auto explore with you. I can't afford to recruit any more units, so I'm not going to. Right now, we're just going to sit pretty while we siege down that city. This is honestly like, again, this has been the worst start that I've had with this and it's still going okay. Two turns until the siege is done. We could go for the Halls of War. It's very expensive. I think getting another quarry is a reasonable move. I could get the Workers Guild. That would be 40 production in here, which would allow me to convert a lot more gold. I think I would really like to get the Mint. But in order to do that, I need to get more man... Yeah, I need to get more knowledge so that I can do certain important things um, with regards to my technology. So my tech is too weak right now, so I need to boost my tech. It says my army is trespassing, but I don't really care. One more turn until we can engage in the siege. This should be a very easy auto-resolve. I don't have any shadow affinity, so I can't take knowledge extraction. That is the one downside of not going for the plus one um, shadow affinity from your thingies. But I think the extra gold works better on this map. Okay, so we're going to annex a quarry. And then we're going to immediately found a city here. I want to clear this layer of spider silk and also clear out all these resource nodes. This like a whole bunch of stuff I need to get to. Um, this underground city is doing fantastic already. I will go ahead and build the granary because the biggest thing I need from the city is for it to grow and just claim all the tiles down here so we can get it under underway. But we may as well boost our mana income just a smidge. No, I should do the granary first. Yeah, the granary first is the move. Now, we have a rally, so we could recruit a fire giant. This would be a tier 4, 30 gold upkeep, 3 imperium upkeep unit. It is a mythic unit with heavy charge strike, volcanic smash. It also has conjure runes. Now, this would actually probably just like really powerfully put me in like put me in an amazing position but here's the question is he a spider i'm torn between okay here's what i'm torn between i'm torn between the idea that this fire giant is like just a super kick-ass unit and that he's not a spider you know what the rule of cool he's an honor i'm giving him honorary spiderhood i'm i'm recruiting a, a giant um whenever i have the money because damn he's expensive uh so arctica has just been murdered she is dead I'm going to extract money from their population as they flee. Uh, and Caravar the Willbreaker has just declared war on me. Okay, so like I said, before turn 30, I was expecting the war to come. Um, so no surprises there. Uh, however, this did come just as we're about to clear Hartheim, which is fantastic. Auto combat, no losses, please. Auto combat, no losses. Excellent. Uh, let's go ahead and vassalize that city. Artica has been defeated. Ooh, do I actually want to vassalize here? Or do I want to absorb it? Because this does have a slag smelter forge down here, and this would be a pretty safe city too. Because in order to get to the city, you would have to go through the underground. So these would be really safe cities down here that I could fuel my economy with. You know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll, maybe I'll annex this. If I annex it, I can get use of this slag smelter forge. Yeah, having two slag smelter forges in my empire would be amazing. Plus, it does technically connect to the other areas. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and annex that into my city. There's sundering blades. Um, I'll take Primal Mark. This will be good for my spiders. They'll get Primal Strike, which will give them extra poison damage on their attacks. Uh, plus eight on their very first attack in a battle. So the war has begun, which means I need to start building defensive buildings um, and draft buildings. So we'll get the Caltrop Stash and the Archer Battlements. That'll give me extra fortification health, which will mean that I'll have more time to recruit units while the city is under siege. The city of Dractust just finished. Um, let's keep on building the quarries um, and your job is to make money so go ahead and start building that vendor i need that gold to sustain me my ruler has leveled up to level six so i will be able to take martial expertise giving him an extra 10 percent damage bringing his web and shoot bow ability up to a really nice level my other hero also leveled up so i will take archery one on you 
Perfect. Um, I don't have... Well, I do have some heroes in my crypt. Let me have a look at their abilities. Yeah, this is worth selling. Sell your remains, get a bit of cash. And you? Oh, yeah, you're definitely worth selling. You got a couple of cool abilities. So I'll sell your remains. Um, and then I'll come in here. I'll look at this hero. See, you got a tier one bow that does 12 damage. So that's up to 36 damage. Or I could give you a heavy crossbow that does 20 damage. It ignores five defense. I actually think that's a straight up worse. You would become more mobile with it, but I don't think that matters to me. I think I'd rather get a chest plate of vitality on you and then leave that as that. And then on you... You already have the chest plate of vitality, so I'm happy with how you're set up. Let's finally start casting Awakened Tools to assist our cities. Neither of these heroes are very good, so I'm going to wait on the hero recruitment front. So I really need to do Expanded Governance um, to increase my city cap, but I'm going to absorb this city first. I will send a welcome gift to her. I will negotiate a wizard bond. I'll do a deal. Perfect. Remember, just it costs me nothing to get those wizard bonds and it reveals their capital city. And it also means that we um, we won't attack each other. Because remember, this guy is the problem. Caravar the Willbreaker. I wonder if I could actually get over to Cragwell and siege it down. I don't really have the army stacks for it. I could start to produce scouts. They're only six gold each. And they're like half strength furies. And they're very expendable. So yeah, I think I'm going to start producing scouts to support my military. The scouts, I'm okay if scouts die in the battle. They just exist to, to fling a web and do AoE damage. Right, we will begin absorbing the city. I'll have to come back to clear this slag smelter um, because I just, I need to heal. My armies need to heal. Unless I were to just take the healthy spiders in and my two heroes. Actually, that might be the play. Now I can pay 200 gold to get defensive attackers. So I'd have bolstering defense. Uh, let's have a look. Two arms. What have we got? A fire giant. A transmuter. The fire giant is the scariest thing here. The transmuter does insane damage, but all these melee units I can deal with pretty easily. I'm pretty sure if I auto combat, I'll lose. I lose only two furies. I think I can win this battle with minimal losses. Let's summon an animal. So what did we get? We got a caustic worm. That's fantastic. You are consuming chaos. So I would like to do that. I'd like to pull this off at some point in this battle to get those benefits. Now, these units can move pretty far. So what I'd like to do is to stand just outside their range. So let's go to here, you go to there, you go to here, and you go to here. And then we'll be able to get like an early attack off to just chip away at them a little and then see how they respond. Let's see what they do. Hopefully they clump up. That would be ideal. They did not clump up. So do I want to do Call of the Wild? They do mostly physical damage. Now the damage on this guy is scary. Um, yeah, let's do a Call of the Wild. We're mostly up against physical damage here. We'll bring our Caustic Worm up here on the right. I'll put my hero behind him and do a chunk of damage. I'll bring a Fury up to here as well and do a chunk of damage. Um, we do have a Rock Falling here. So I reckon we web this guy. No immobilize, sadly. But we can fall back and shoot him and then fall back and shoot him. Now, I wonder, does Consume Chaos work? He has no negative status effects. That's the problem that we have there. Boom. Okay, I think we're, we're in a position now. Oh, the Petrify was painful. The Petrify on the Transmuter? That was rough. Yeesh. Uh, let's go ahead and cast Mark of the Wild to give us better defense again. We're gonna do a Caustic Eruption. Big hits. Uh, we can kill this guy, I think. Perfect. I'm a little bit worried about the Fire Giant charge but I'll just have to live with that. Let's fire a big AoE. I could fire a big AoE on the right as well. What if I cast Slippery and you step back a tile? Could you kill him? You could basically kill him. That would be huge. Amazing. So what's the morale looking like on the enemy team? Uh, it's looking okay. They haven't really lost any morale. That's fine though. But I think we're getting pretty efficient damage trades. This is gonna hurt. Okay, we're down a Fury. That's fine. Um, let's tackle the Transmuter. So he can't do nothing no more. Then we're going to fire off our webs. Do we want to stand in this explosion? You fire your web. Big hit. Fire your web. Big hit. Fire your web. Big hit. Tri oh, we could mark this guy as prey and then get major damage on him. Boom, boom, boom. Then we just need to get... Oh, the web shot from the hero in the back line. Fire giants down. Easy. Yeah, sure, this is going to hurt when this falls from the ceiling, but I think we'll survive. Uh, heavy charge. Hero forward one step. Shoot and shoot. All right, managed to clear it with just a single Fury lost. I think that's a much better outcome, um, especially because we got some levels and stuff out of that. So we can get Juggernaut Greaves, which I think means you can run through terrain. The Punisher Halberd or the Wind Barrier Ring. The Wind Barrier Ring is insanely good. 60% physical uh, and range stuff. Oh, I can just get them all. Uh, I'm just going to take them all. Now, where does this come out? So this comes out over here. I still feel relatively safe. And now let's start bringing our units back to the actual fight on the above ground. Tuskheim can annex another province. We'll be building a ton of quarries because we want that gold income. 
and eventually we want to be able to convert the production in the city to um to gold that's the that's the goal silky eight legs has leveled up once again he's currently level seven we could take keen edge for critical chance i'll take that um and i'll give him wind barrier ring so that he's much harder to attack at range sharon of the shining is going to take archery too for another 10 percent damage and awakening tools i'm going to cast that on my capital to get the 20 production and 20 draft i'm going to cast this on basically every city now the spell does cost six mana to, to maintain but i think 20 production and 20 draft is worth six mana like that's a good conversion rate in my opinion i don't like either of those heroes so i'm not going to recruit them i'll send a welcome gift and then i will see if we can negotiate a wizard bond with this new hero they want gold i'll pay the money because remember the only person i have to kill is the demon prince now he's probably going to be building the seed of chaos soon um which is going to be scary so i need to get up to cragwell to clear it as soon as possible because if i can take a city off him i actually think i'll set him back pretty heavily the city will be annexed next turn yeah there's a bunch of terrain down here that i should clear in theory and it also yeah i'll send a fury no well see i have to clear it with my armies if i don't clear it with my armies yeah i'll i'll take an extra turn to clear this all right the first units are starting to arrive in my capital um and all we have are pathfinders to fight it it's kind of scary i think though that a stack of pathfinders with like a little bit of combat support might be able to do something useful there so she won't take a pact positive first contact if i were to do a declaration of friendship i could potentially get a defensive pact on her but that wouldn't get her actually into the war but she did just declare a friendship with me which is good which is a good sign okay yeah nope we gotta we gotta get these units above ground right now can't delay sadly uh let's annex the magma forge yeah i pushed my luck now i might be able to grab a couple of these stacks on their own which will be great for me um defense 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 i think producing just having extra money is my best defense right now so i'm going to start to produce merchandise uh, and similarly in hartheim i'm going to tell this city to just produce cash it won't do so very efficiently it's only 10 gold per turn but that is enough gold to maybe make a difference when i'm spamming furies from a single city these guys are going to sit down here to heal the war breed is just a little bit too strong for these guys like i mean look at the amount of buffs he has he has blood fury weapons animal kinship round of wrath flame burst weapons searing blades this guy is just gross so we're gonna have to defeat him in detail we have to try and beat him piece by piece um, with very limited resources all right here he comes himself um i think he sent his hero down here let's bring these units above ground now enter up head up this way join this fight i think i can auto combat this it's a little bit painful um but let's get you now up into the city so you can heal and get you into the city so i've got three stacks of serviceable units not ideal serviceable units so we're going to keep spamming furies and what we want to do is try to take out a couple of these stacks bit by bit i'm going to come in here i'm going to take natural recovery which will give me 15 health points per turn inside my territory which will give me much more sustainability uh, because i should be regenerating uh for 45 health per turn which will allow me to do a lot more hidden runs because i need to defeat these armies in detail and then rush back to my city um let's do a combination of furies and hunter spiders because i am going to need a front line here the city itself i would love to repair these but my quarries got dumped on um which feels bad now, in terms of things that I need to research, I 100% need to get Amplified Arrows um, because that'll allow my ranged units to bounce their attacks. I also need to get Guided Projectiles, which will allow me to ignore, ignore Obscuring. Um, I also need to get uh, like the Tome of Fertility and the Tome of Glades to be able to make forests and stuff to have a better ec economy. But right now, when it comes to battling, I think I just need the Tome of Amplification because if I can get Amplified Arrows here, this would be like a game changer. Right. Um... Yeah, we're going to take the Tome of Amplification for Amplified Arrows. It's an incredibly important ability when you're doing any sort of ranged build. Astral Blood is pretty good. I'm going to lock that in and re-roll. Okay, I'm going to take Astral Blood. Uh, I was hoping to find Amplified Arrows, but I didn't. Capital can annex another province. I will take a new quarry and I'll get started on making an armory. The armory will allow me to draft more units more quickly. The Hunter Spider... Is about 110 draft per turn and the fury is about 140 draft per turn so we're just going to want a combination of those two units i will cast a production spell here although i want to be a little bit more careful with my mana i'm going to use a lot of mana in the upcoming battle so i'm going to hold on to that for now and next turn we're going to start looking to maybe clear some of these stacks uh looks like he came downstairs to kill me um in the sanctuary of the horde all right let's have a look at what we can do here can we pick apart this army before it gets too strong honestly i think we can let's pay money to finish a fury this turn we'll step over here 
and we'll kill this guy. This should be an easy auto combat. He shouldn't even get damage off. We're going to have to fight a couple of scary battles here. But I think we have the power to do it. If we attack this kitty, we only have to fight three stacks of fairly weakened units. I think we can make this work. Honestly, I think we can even auto combat this and win. Yeah, we lost a single scout for this. This is just the power of the spider. Like we're going up against like insane tier three, tier four tier units. Uh, and now we should, in theory, be able to clear this as well. And take no losses. And then we get back into the city to heal. Uh, we'll want to reorganize this army as well. The healthy units joining up forces uh, to potentially go put Cragwell under siege. He did just finish the seed, seed of Chaos, right? So turn 33. Um, so I would expect him to get the next two seeds within the next 20 to 40 turns. But if I could take out Cragwell, this would be a significant blow to his economy and his ability to, um, to inflict damage on the map. So yeah, Cragwell is next on the chopping block. I don't know if I should keep producing scouts. I mean, you know what? The scouts are just so cost effective. They will fall off, but I should continue to make some um, just to bulk out my army because I need to fill up the slots. Sharon of the Shining, I'm going to go ahead and take Keen Edge on her. And I will also grab Mass Rejuvenation is an amazing uh, spell because it allows us to restock our units if we have a little bit of damage at the start of a battle. Right, let's go straight for the throat in Cragwell. Now we're up against a lot of stuff here, but my hope is that if we hit it hard and fast enough, with enough vim and vigor, we should be fine. Can I put the city under siege this turn? That would be ideal. Um, start the siege. We need the city to break as soon as possible. So a headlong assault would bring it down to two turns. And then a harass the defenders would put us on e equal footing. All right, let's see how Cragwell does. Two turns and we could take it out. I wonder if he decides to counterattack. He might not because he's going to try to maybe get reinforcements over here. Oh, he's actually abandoning the city. Okay, that's actually big. I can get money and allow our mounts to breed. Um, I could give him my Dread Spider. I think I'll take the money. A little bit of cash flow here could be big. Cragwell falls next turn. This is, um, shite. Drac Tusk is under siege. Okay, we'll have to deal with that. We're up against a pretty scary composition as well. We need to we need to clear out this Dragon Slayer. This is kind of like the, the danger of playing on Brutal. You're just, you're always putting out so many fires. But you can guarantee I am very happy that I put a ton of uh, fortification in here. I think I'll be able to clear Cragwell, vassalize it, and then run down here in time to save it. Um, but it might be close. I am going to recruit the Shell the Shining um, and just send her down here to try to get enough power in the city to protect it. I'll put you as the governor of this city. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to buy expanded governance. That should fix my economy problem. Okay, right. Ooh, no, I shouldn't be building Pathfinders in this city. This city is not good for that. The city should never build units. Yes, the city should never, ever, ever build units. Well, I guess a single... No, I need to... Yeah. The goal of Hartheim is to produce gold for me. So I'm going to go ahead and start producing a market. And then I'll go for a mint. And then after the mint, I'll go for the merchant guild in here. Uh, the main goal is just to make money out of the city, really. Open borders with Carissa the Red. I'll take it. Here we go. Oh, here comes the counterattack. Okay, that's a lot of fucking war breeds. Jesus. Okay, if I auto combat this, I expect I lose. All right, well, let me tell you, the outcome of this battle decides the outcome of this entire campaign. I was not expecting him to have three full stacks of Warbreeds to come at me. Um, now these Warbreeds, they run fast. They have heavy charge strikes, so it's very scary to go up against them. I think if I play the right side of this battle, I might be able to do more work. Let's summon an animal. I got a unicorn. I'm going to teleport my unicorn to the left. I'm going to try to use this to distract these Warbreeds so that I can fight this right side army um, solo. Now, I need, I need to stay abreast of any potential AoE he has. Uh, not a whole lot of non-melee AoE. He does have a spider here, so I need to worry about that. And then he also has a pyromancer here. So I don't want my units to get too stacked up because I am very vulnerable to AoE. So I want to keep some spacing. I never want him to be able to get more than three, um, three units in an AoE. Three is fine. Any more than that, and it's too much. All right, let's see what he does. Now, he might use a big old spell on me. Okay, he's spreading out on the flanks and he's concentrating in the middle. Let's keep running this unicorn left. Uh, he is very physically oriented. So I think doing Call of the Wild here is my best bet to give me sustain. Yeah, they're just out of my range. Um, so let's get a little closer and stack them all up in a very careful fashion. My unicorn and my scout will be playing this left side to try to defend while I try to win the right and mid. See what they do. Okay, he's charging mid. What's this web? This has got to be a fat web. Oh, man. That's a disgusting web. Look at that. And another. Already some kills. Um, 
Let's do Call of the Wild. I should have done that first. That's a mistake. Um, let's throw the web here. Force them to heal each other. Just pull the unicorn as far to the left as I can to act as distraction with this scout. Uh, let's throw a big old web. And he immobilizes. Okay, this is huge. We immobilized the warrior. Let's throw another web. Now, the fact that we immobilized that warrior means he's not going to be able to get up into melee range this turn. And I think most of these guys are immobilized as well, so I'll be able to get real close at my spider and throw uh, a web next turn. Oh yeah, it's looking... So far, it's looking all right. God, I'd love to immobilize him too. It would really wreck his head. Oh, we got it. Okay, so I just, I don't want to kill this guy, so I'm not going to attack. I'm just going to patiently wait a turn. He retreats. Oh man, he's moving up into more dangerous positions. These guys are going for it. There we go. Pinned. That's fine. There we go, there we go, okay. Come on, give me these big web hits. Yeah, that's what I was expecting. Okay, so I want to fire a web off here. Bam. I want to shoot this dog in the back. And then with this spider, I want to fire off another web. Bam. And then with you, you may as well shoot that archer. Take him out. Slightly out of range for what we want to be doing. Bring my ruler forward. Sunder some defense. Kill this archer. I think that just makes sense. God, I can't wait till I have amplified arrows. So we need we need to just let them continue to approach. Um, now, if I kill him, he has a movement speed of one, two, three, four tiles. So if I kill this guy, he'll be able to get up and into melee with me. But this guy's going to move regardless. So I may as well kill him now. Um, so I'm going to step forward with my hero and sunder this guy's defense, then this should be a kill. Uh, scout, do a little bit of damage there. And I think I could hit him in the back, but that would leave me vulnerable to a war breed. and your job is to distract. So I'm just gonna leave this unicorn in range. We'll end our turn. It's already looking great for me, I think. Uh, now, we are gonna take some serious counterattacks here. I might even lose this hero, but I am okay with losing that hero because we saved all of our webs. Our morale just went to neutral, but remember, it was high because we were doing so well, so we're just being put back Slightly on the back foot, that's all. All right. Um, you run forward, kill that transmuter. You kill that skirmisher. You kill that ogre. Now their morale is looking grim. All right, where are my webs at? Here we go. I need you to fall back a tile so you don't take web. I'm going to cast a Marcus Prey on this guy. Boom, boom, boom. Shoot him in the back. That's one. All right, perfect, he's down. Throw your own web. Super immobilized, I'm happy with that. Kill this guy, hopefully break them. Mm, not quite. Please kill him, I need them to break. Let me see, okay, two of them are fleeing. Maybe this hit can cause a frout. Not quite. Okay, so I need to prevent them from getting any more kills. Um, this is- Oh, open route! Only one guy is still here. Dude. That's big. The enemy is fleeing. Perfect. That's huge. Um, a lot of their units escaped, but I only lost a hero and two uh, range units. I lost a Fury and a Scout. That was massive. I cannot overstate how big a victory that was. Let's go ahead and auto combat this. Should be an easy kill. Perfect. Uh, we are going to... I think we immediately vassalize this because that's going to be a one turn thing. I'm curious what his military score is now. Oh man, he's 6th to 7th. I actually have a bigger military than him. I just crushed him. Now he will remax really quickly, but man, he has got to be feeling the pain. I'm actually, I'm actually getting frisian on the back of my neck with how epic that was. That was insane. So, uh, thank you guys for watching this episode. This is the opening moves of the brutal spider demon combat game where uh, we're fighting for our life. But I think we're, we're getting to a point where we're stabilizing. Once we take Cragwell, I think we'll be able to gather a horde of furies and go for Stranglehold. I would love to have amplified arrows by the time we get there, though. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!